Listen, I'm very sorry I came late today. Uh, literally, I had to right, finish work, go drop my mum off somewhere, and then I had to come back. And uh, I'll probably be late in the next couple of weeks as well. The thing is, oh, uh, bro, my mother always relies on me. I'm like the good child. So I'm, I'm the one that always gets relied on when it comes to looking after my parents, um, which is a very important thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. I admire that. I, I have to do what I have to do. Uh, I went to, I went to work late once as well because of something to do with a family issue and they didn't appreciate it. This was in my previous job mm. and made me think about the important things in life. And work is important, but for me, my mum and dad come number one. I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. Dude, I mean, it's a no-brainer. I do. I, I liked how you said I'm the good one because I take care of my mom or I help her and stuff like that. Or so I'm I forced to. Or <laughs> you're forced to. So I think, yeah, I think, is that like a preconceived notion maybe in society amongst our circles of friends that if you help your parents, you're good? It's not a duty. It's not a duty. Like you go to work, you, you, you have a job, you go f you know, to work nine to five, you get paid for bro, it. Bro, I never tell my mom I'm you're, doing You're her not gonna say you're a good employee. You know what, you gotta do what you gotta do. No, nothing against but you, bro. It's, but it's not easy though, between me and you. Sometimes I do think about it because I do have a lot of friends who when their parents, my parents are very old, become old, they put them in the care homes or they, they, you know, they do something that, because uh, at the end of the day, we, we are always supposed to move forward. So now my family is me and my wife and my child soon to be children and then so on and so forth but you can't forget your parents do you know what i mean i, f I feel i feel awkward saying no to my mom it's not it's not forgetting them said see it's, it's funny enough that the other day i was speaking to uh to a friend he's quite younger than me actually about 10 years younger than me and he was saying you know my dad is telling me don't do this don't do that what the hell does he know uh, and i was like whoa hold on brother you know Fair enough, you know, what does he know? He knows a bit more about life than you do. It's like, no, you know, he's so backward, you know, he, he's, he's living his days in Iraq and he's trying to tell me what to do going through life the way he went through it. And I'm saying, no, 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 you know, just listen to him. You know, he probably has got some good things that you can take and l learn from it as well. But I find it that the youth nowadays, I mean, the, the ones that I've been talking to, that they think, you know, Things are evolving so quick with like social media, technology-wise. My parents don't know anything. They don't know anything about what, what I'm going through now. How can they teach mm. me? How can they tell me what to do? Who are they to tell me what to do? Uh, I know I want to listen to someone from my own age group or someone slightly older than me, but knows exactly what's happening in the world. And then the same topic I had with a parent as well. And he was telling me, I can't control my son. You know, I don't, I don't know what he's doing. He's sitting at a computer, he's sitting on his phone, he's doing things, he doesn't listen to me. I tell him, don't touch your phone, do this. Like, Dad, what do you know? Everybody's on his phone nowadays. Or he just, you know, blags me off and tells me, yeah, 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 whatever. You don't know what you're talking about. So I think it's a very sensitive Mate, topic. I definitely it's don't think we should one. be disrespectful to our parents, but I think there's... Sometimes I feel, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I feel that uh, there is a bit of pressure. I mean, it's very hard to juggle between your uh, family life in terms of your wife and your children uh, and your job and stuff like that. Sometimes your parents, you know, some, like my parents are very old and they find it difficult to do a lot of things. So someone has to kind of look after them. Mm. But sometimes I think it shouldn't come to the expense of my job. Because if I do lose my job, who's going to pay for the rent and the family? No, but I'm, like I'm sure your parents wouldn't put you in that position. I mean, no, they but care there are for things you. that happen. There are things that happen, for example. You know what? I, it is so where, where indeed a sensitive line, one. Kind of, where do you draw the line? Because when I speak to my friends who tell me, look, at a certain point when our parents become old, we put them in care homes because they need to be looked after and we cannot do it. It's like, but you should do it. So you see, I but if you do do it on a practical level, on a practical level, then other things in your life get messed up. Do you know what I mean? The first thing I want to say, yeah. and this is something that you said before Ali spoke, you said... I have to obviously, I have to take care of my family now. And you were referencing your wife and your child. Mm. I kind of disagree with that. And again, this is my opinion only. My family includes or should include your parents first. Wife has come in when you're an adult. Your parents have been with you from day one. Mm. Wife 
God forbid, can, can go as well. Parents, that's a relationship with blood. When, it, when they go, they, that's when Allah decides to take, take them away or take you away. And that's when that relationship ceases to exist. But a wife, while you're still alive and stuff, you know, divorces happen, etc. I'm, I'm not going to go down there, God forbid. That's why I said God forbid. Um, I don't really I think, look at my wife in that way, though. No, no, I, I can no, see no, no, what no, no, Ali's no. saying. I'm, I'm no, no, sorry, no, no. carry on, of Ali. Course I want to hear it. I think he's of making course a really not. good point. Okay. I'm just trying to make one point. Which I agree with. I think my parents are everything. And sorry to get a bit emotional, but I would always want to, whether I can or have the ability or certain circumstances don't allow me, and God forbid, but I would always want to be there for my parents. And maybe because they're not here with me in this country and I'm limited to like WhatsApp and Viber and all that stuff. Um, I want to care for them. I want to be the reason for their happiness. I want to make sure they're happy. They've done so much for me. I don't even know what they've done for me. I can only imagine. So, inshallah, I pray that I'll be able to live up to that ideal son, you know, to them. Sure and I hope all of us are, uh, our parents. And I, I've, I've heard it in the Quran, I've heard it in majalises, I've heard it in lectures, the importance of being respectful to your parents, loving them wholeheartedly, unconditionally, you know. Um, I'm sure you'll have an ayah for us very soon, um, which I'm looking forward to anyway. Or a by Imam Sadr. Or, or <laughs> but I, <laughs> I'm not saying that wife and kids aren't important. No, absolutely not. That is a different realm, a, a different condition. But when, when you say family, and this is what the Western society, I guess I'm not Western in that regard, if that's the Western approach, that your family is your wife and your kids. That's Where I'm does saying. your parents go though? That's, that's, the, the, that's the dilemmas that you face. But you please don't understand. misunderstand me. My mum and dad are not a burden. They're not a burden. I don't mean to make them seem like a burden, but there is a problem with uh, practical aspects. For example, the amount of money you make here, uh, the amount of rent you pay, the, the, the responsibilities that you have towards your child and your wife. And sometimes there are problems like, or, or, or there's a lack of balance or, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's hard to find that kind of thing. For example, your mum can't go shopping because of a condition she has, so you need to go shopping for her. Mm. Does that mean when she needs something, you drop everything you have and you go and buy her what she needs? Or there needs to be some kind of compromise every Sunday we'll go for a shop for the whole Ali, uh, just to answer, yeah, Just to answer that question, I think your mother knows exactly how, what your circumstances are and how, how your life is. She knows exactly you have working hours, you've got a family, I'm pretty sure she can she can respect that and she understands that as well and she she understands that when she does ask you for a favor or she needs your help or something not for a favor sorry she needs your help you yeah. have to be there it's your yeah. responsibility that she does it in a in a timely manner and she knows okay on Sundays or on Saturdays I know he's free I'm not going to be a burden onto him because I don't think any mum or dad wants to be a burden onto their son you know they love them they want to look after them like when you were young, they probably wouldn't want to, you know, when they would punish you is because they would love you. It's out not of that love. they want to, so they want to be a burden. It's, it's sometimes circumstances puts it like that. For example, my mother has a hospital appointment at, let's say, 11 a.m. on a Tuesday when yeah. I'd be at work. Um, for someone like my mother who regularly has hospital appointments, she needs someone to take her, right? Um, and the problem I had with my previous job is I had to keep taking time off to go take her and come back. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. you know, hospital appointments are usually in the morning. They're all over time. My employer didn't appreciate that. He said, look, your mum's ill. Okay, I get that. She needs someone to look after her. There are other ways that you can deal with this. You can't just keep leaving all these important, other important things in your life and going to your parents. Um, now, my question is, is that right what he's saying, or was it right what I was doing, or... Because it's become blurred to me now, I'm getting a bit confused. What is my responsibility? What should I be doing? Because the more I do, the more I feel I'm not doing as much as I should, because that's my mum and dad, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it becomes problematic in trying to find the balance with other things in life. Is that, am I making sense or not? Yeah, I don't yeah. Ali made a really good are. point, um, but I think once you move... Um, away from your parents, you move out, right? 
um, and let's say you get married in the ideal world you've moved out you are married now um, to Ali's point about having your wife and your parents are important etc I think it's really really important for us to accept the fact that um, or be in agreement with our partners if I just want to touch on that point be in agreement with our partners that my parents are important as well as your parents what I would expect you to do for my parents yeah. is what I would expect myself to do for your parents because Birr al is a red line. That's it. it is the reason why we are here. It is the reason why we have so much tawfiq in our life. And it is also the reason why we may have certain uh, difficulties in our life. It can go either way. Yeah. Let's think of the whole of um, um, how we should be, our relationship with our parents. Is it a relationship that is um, forced upon me? Perhaps yes, because I was born in a family with two parents. Yeah, and, 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 and the difficulties that perhaps these parents were going, um, having, you were also put into that situation. <coughs> yeah, so you the know, first thing is, not everybody's uh, is, healthy, it, is not it a forced everybody's... relationship? And yes, it is a forced relationship. Mm. Now, do I want to look at it as a forced relationship? Or do I want to look at it as a relationship that brings so much blessings and so much comfort into my life I think it should be the latter now I'm talking about nothing religious nothing scientific it's just something humane rather um, so from a humane perspective if Ali does a favor for me I am gonna be you know feeling like I have to return this favor back towards Ali mm. if he for example visited yeah. me when I was sick or he congratulated me when I had a particular occasion. I'm going to want to do the same for him. Now, why is it that some people, um, and hopefully none of us is one of those people, um, feel like it's a burden to return the favor to someone, to someone like my mum or someone like my dad? Yeah. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Who favored you so speaking much? <laughs> of, speaking of Ali's, uh, Sayyid Ali's point in terms of, do I drop everything and go and um, meet their sort of requirements or just um, you know, do their, their chores or whatever it is, their errands? I think not dropping everything and going to them, but rather thinking of it before how to do it is why you know the reason why I am going to do it is because I have so much love for these people we're talking about a humane factor here yeah. I have so much love for these people and I'm so grateful and thankful for them to for what they've done for me in their life and plus if I put myself in their shoes when they are 50 or 60 when I'm 50 and six or 60 my son or daughter are going to be 20 25 how do I want them to react to how to my needs to my disabilities that have probably not, they may, they may have been delayed 10 or 15 years if they hadn't brought me to life. How many illnesses did my mom get just bringing me to this life? Oh, yeah. How many things did she have to sacrifice? How many things did my father have to sacrifice for me? Why is it that they, ha they left their countries back at home? Um, is it just for them? I'm 100% certain that it's not just for them. They are a factor, but the biggest factor is us. Why is it now that they're 60, 70, we are comfortable, we're living a good life and, and they somehow go back home or they tend to do things that they never used to do when they were younger. Mm. Why? It's because they couldn't do it when we were growing up. They were sacrificing their time, their comfort. So that's the humane perspective. And there are, of course, other angles, which I'm sure you guys There's will a practical upon. aspect though, Satan. Of course, we love our parents. We do want to repay them. We want to do as much as we can. But practically speaking, can you do that all the time? You said, I, you, you didn't answer the question. Should you drop everything and run to your parents every time they need you? It's the approach. Yeah. It's the approach. Okay. It's rather than saying, I'm going to drop everything. If my mom has a hospital appointment or a GP appointment, she's going to have at least a week's notice. You know, we're, we're living in the US, speaking in the UK, right? Yeah. Um, and typically you'd be in a job where you can, uh, you are allowed a particular 28 days holiday, is it? What about the worst case scenario? You're not. Your, your employer, for example, he was having issues with his employer, is not giving you permission. This is do? when you come to plan B. If you have embedded the factor, which is that our parents are important within your relationship, mm. then you can rely on 
your missus. I'm talking about an ideal world here. Mm. In extreme circumstances, if no, you're we saying, don't live in an ideal world. So give it in a practical approach, say it. Like don't, I just said, this is this is the way I see it. Bro, can no, I, no, no, can no. I say I'm saying, then? okay, I'm speaking for myself. If I can't make it to a particular appointment with my parents, right? Whether it's because of uh, holidays or whether it's uh, holidays at work or whether it's because um, having certain responsibilities that I need to, you know, travel or something like that. I will make sure there is someone there to look after them within that particular window. If this is not available, honestly, I'm, sp I'm speaking as from a personal, um, with a personal view, sure. um, I will drop everything and go. Reason being, yeah. if we want to look at this from a religious perspective now, I, we need to just first of all agree that the Quran is our constitution. Ahlul Bayt are our guides. Mm. If we agree with that, then we need to always use it as our starting point, our base. Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 23 and 24. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa qadha rabbuka an la ta'budu illa iya wa bil walidayni ihsana. Translate. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has um, destined you to uh, worship no one but Allah and to be good towards your parents. Instantly after. So first he asked to be worshipped and instantly after he said... So be good towards your parents. I don't want to say the, the wrong um, wordings. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Imma. Imma yablughanna indaka al-kibara ahaduhuma aw kilahuma فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحْمَهُمَا كَمَا رَبِّ عَنْصَ I'm just going to touch on one word from one this. One word, oof, Because isn't it? Oof. Just one word, no, 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 no. الذُّل. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our religion, our Islamic religion, our faith and our sect, they encourage us to be people who are of dignity. Our dignity is so important. Right. This is one of the reasons, this is one of the factors that uh, are associated with why you shouldn't drink alcohol, for example. Sure. It takes away your dignity because you act in a certain way. That's a different topic, but I'll just take that one yep. stroke from it. But subhanAllah, in this ayah, it says, Lower your wing of humility with your parents. You should humiliate yourself when it comes down to your parents. But you shouldn't do that I, I with anything know. else in your life. Yeah. Mm. Why should I humiliate myself? Islam is about uh, dignity. It's about being uh, the best of people. We were just speaking about that the other day. Do you remember? We should always speak, be people who are presented in the best way. But when it comes down to parents, it's different. this is why our, sometimes, look, even our culture protects this factor. We come from a particular culture where, for example, some cultures, you go and you kiss their feet. Yeah. yeah. In my culture, no, you kiss their hand. And subhanAllah, this was embedded within me where if I'm in the middle of wherever and I'm just greeting my father, I'm going down on his hand, I'm kissing it, I'm placing it on my forehead. Is this humiliation in some people's eyes? Some, some people's, people, in some other people cultures? May think yes, it's OTT. why are you humiliating yourself? But hold on, they are my parents. Hmm. For no one else you should do Beautiful. That. Beautiful. I heard a very nice uh, line actually. Um, it was actually from a movie, funny enough, where the girl was telling her, her dad, you know, it's your job to look after me. And he said, no, it's not my job. It's my joy. Uh, Being a parent, they don't take it as their job. They enjoy it. Yeah. They do it wholeheartedly. And you can't really understand it until you actually have your own kids and you look at them and, you know, they wake up in the middle of the night. You go and you, you know, you. You ask yes. them, you, you, what do you need? Do you need water? You need to cover them up if they get cold. And, and, and that's, that, that is a joy. You really enjoy it. And at the same time, when you do the same for your parents and they, they are elderly mm. and they need your help, when you do help them out, you actually feel joy afterwards. You don't feel like it's a burden. Oh, yeah, I had to do it. You look at it and then, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, I've noticed this with a couple of my friends as well who look after their elderly parents. They have so much rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of heavens to them. You know, they, 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 he, he finds them, they find a, a wife that is equally like him, 
who wants to look after oh, yes, his parents yes. as well. Yes. Rizq uh, comes in the many different comes ways, in, right? Yes. But subhanAllah, yes. the, the one that does only think about himself and you know, wants to not associate himself with his parents, you find he, he's always into, into problems or into issues. Yes. Either sickness or his son has a, an issue or his son is not polite to him or whatever There's happens a, to him. You're reminding me of a story. Sorry. I, yeah, I'll, so I'll what comes it. around goes around. It's really, yeah. it's really important. And as you were saying, Sayyid, you, know, you, 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 you lower your wing you know, to, your, to your parents. Mm. Of humility, subhanAllah, the, the, when you do it to your parent, it feels different. I feel like it gives you that, that right. um, it makes halo, you, I think, so rather I than it, giving uh, it, it makes you feel as humility. Something I, want I feel like it gives, makes me feel I want to like let me just a better cut, person let me just and cut. a bigger oh, person. Yes, yes. No, cut so your cake. I just want to yeah, clarify bro, one, one point. point. <laughs> that, Where's that, the team, man? Where's the team? Mustache. Peach. Make it happen. Peach. Do you want